back to my channel. Today I am doing my final book haul of 2021, which is not that impressive of a statement given that we're like three weeks till the end of the year, but I have picked up a few books in recent weeks and I wanted to chat about them and I'm hoping that they will sustain me through at least the first few months of the new year because Brooklyn and I are trying to get an apartment and I need to stop buying books. <laughs> so this is like my last hurrah and then I'm done for a while. I really do promise. Um, so we have a mix of things. Some that I got when I was abroad in Germany. And then some that I recently ordered, recently picked up. All different things. So, first I will start with um, when I was in Berlin. The lovely Hannah. Rec I'll link her channel below. She's incredible. She recommended me, first of all, a bunch of amazing food places. So, that was amazing and then a few bookstores so I first went to oh, what's it called St. George's bookstore in Berlin and I already talked about this one at length in my October and November wrap-up but that is Rosewater by Tate Thompson um, this is the first in a alien invasion trilogy and I loved it um, so if you want to know more check out my wrap-up so that was the first one I got at St. George's books shop or bookstore and then I got this one which I had never heard of and it does sound slightly ridiculous but sometimes I'm in the mood for that so it is called um, The Terranauts by T.C. Boyle it's a pretty horrific cover but let's not shoot it while it's down um, this is I will just read you the blurb Linda is desperate to be one of the lucky eight chosen to take part in the world's most ambitious ecological experiment she knows she can survive two years under the glass dome of Ecosphere 2 but competition is fierce between the hopefuls, among them smooth-talking PR man Ramsey and Dawn the naive beauty. Inside the human microcosm, the Terranauts labor and their hostilities and sexual dalliances, dalliances are all observed by Taurus who come to gawp. As they struggle to control nature and hunger sets in, a snake in this Eden starts to look unmistakably human. So kind of like a Lord of the Flies type of tale. I don't know, just when I'm in the mood for something entertaining and doesn't make my brain think too much. Then, um, I actually don't know the name of this bookstore because we just happened to walk by it. And what I got is not exactly wise because I just, okay, it's another trilogy and it's, they only had the second and third book. And I don't yet own the first book. But I loved the edition so much <laughs> that I just bought them and I will find the first. So this is the second and third book in Titsi Demgremga's um, I don't know the name of the trilogy. It's about Tambutsai. So it's a coming of age. So this is the editions. I just loved them so much. They're so beautiful. So this is the second, the Book of Knot, and then the last one that came out in 2020, um, the Mourn This Mournable Body. So I don't have the first one. I need to pick it up, obviously. But this is a trilogy, like a coming of age story following a young girl, I think into her um, early adulthood, Tambutsai. And we're following her with like the backdrop of the changing political situation in Zimbabwe um, and like the fight for independence. So I've heard incredible things. Obviously, this last one was um, up for, was shortlisted for the Booker in 2020. So that kind of put it on my radar because I had never heard of it before that. Um, so yes, I need to pick up the first one, which is Nervous Conditions, but I just could not resist. I loved these covers. So those four, all I got while in Berlin. I had a lot of self-control. Then I came home and did a quick little um, order on bookshop.org, which is a fantastic website. I would highly recommend it. I can link that below. I got um, Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton. You may know that I read Lent by Joe Walton in March and loved it beyond anything. Oh my God, it was so incredible. So I ordered this and I'm not really sure. <laughs> looked like a standard book on the website and it looks like a little diary in real life which is kind of cute um, and I don't even really know what it's about it's a fantasy book um, but the back is calling it the pride and prejudice of the dragon world which I'm not sure that needs to exist but I'm still intrigued by this so it's about a family dealing with the death of their father a son goes to court for his inheritance, another son agonizes over his father's deathbed confession, one daughter becomes involved in the abolition movement, while another sacrifices herself for her husband, and everyone in the tale is a dragon, red in tooth and claw. So it just sounds really interesting. I don't know, and I'm really liking the little diary aesthetic. Um, but what I wanted to mention, 
I read Lent, like I said, and I actually got it for Christmas from my parents last Christmas, and I didn't know that they had purchased it for me. So I already had purchased one for myself, and now I have two. Um, so I would love to give this to somebody that's interested in reading it. It is about um, a 15th century monk, Girolamo Savonarola, if you have heard of him. He was a real person, and he said that he could commune with God. He had his own thing going on. He said he could see demons and send them to hell. And he got into a lot of trouble with the Borgia papacy. And he thought they were all demons. Um, obviously, there were some things going on there. And I absolutely love learn learning about the Borgias. So that's why I picked this up originally, because he makes an appearance in the Borgias on Netflix, which is by far my favorite absurd historical fiction show. So I thought that I would send this to somebody. If you're interested in reading it, I would love to share it with you. I don't need two copies. And I was thinking we could do like a little, if you comment below your favorite absurd historical fiction television show and why you love it and why it's ridiculous, I will just pick somebody and send it to you if you wouldn't mind like sharing where I could send this. So if you're into historical, historical fiction, 15th century politics, and... A little bit of magic. I think you would really enjoy this. So yes, comment below your favorite absolutely absurd historical fiction drama and why it's fantastic and also slightly uncomfortable and ridiculous. And I will happily send this your way. Um, and then from bookshop.org I also got the second book in the Rosewater Trilogy because I loved the first one so much. So I obviously can't really share what this is about. Um, but I think we're going to learn more about the government agency and how the alien presence is really affecting the people around it. So I'm really excited about that. And then these next two I heard about from Jalen. So I will direct you to his channel below. He recently talked about both of them and Sheila Hetty was always on my radar because of how much I loved motherhood but Jalen just talked about this and I was like okay it's time to read another. So this is um, Sheila Hetty's breakthrough novel in an unabashed honest and hilarious tour through the unknowable pieces of one woman's heart and mind part literary novel, part self-help manual, and part vivid exploration of the artistic and sexual impulse. Um, Hetty challenges, questions, frustrates, and entertains in equal measure. With urgency and candor, she asks, what is the most noble way to love? What kind of person should you be? So I'm so excited about this. It's quite a beautiful cover, really simple. Um, and then Jalen and Jen Campbell both just spoke about a Ghost in the Throat by Doreen Nee Jarofa. I'm not sure how to say the last name, but this sounds like a haunting book. Oh, actually, Emma Donahue is blurbed on the back. So I think it connects two women through time and place. So the blurb is just, when we first met, I was a child and she had been dead for centuries. So if I'm understanding cor correctly, on discovering her murdered husband's body, an 18th century Irish noblewoman drinks handfuls of his blood and composes an extraordinary lament. And then we kind of speed through time. This lament finds its way to a new mother who has narrowly avoided her own fatal tragedy. I will just read the little description because the blurb is actually kind of complex. So it's a shape-shifting book, a record of literary obsession, a narrative about the erasure of people of a language of women, a meditation on motherhood and on translation, an unforgettable story about finding your voice by freeing in others. So I'm so excited about this one. Maybe my next read. I'm currently reading Little Women because I just need the joy in my life. Um, last one I got from bookshop.org is Greenwood by Michael Christie. So this is a classic generational tale all about forests and trees. So it starts out, I think we're following like multiple generations of the Greenwood family. Um, so we start in 2038 and Jake Greenwood is working as a tour guide at an ultra rich vacation center which is the world's last remaining forest. And then we go back I think like generation through generation and how, see how this family is tied to trees um, and how it has really been the through line of this family. So I think it's going to be like an ecological story um, and the cover is quite beautiful. But yes, I heard a lot of people talking about this and I'm a sucker for anything generational. I love a family tale. So that's everything I got from bookshop.org and then I happened to go to Barnes and Nobles the other day to get something as a gift. I had to get a gift for somebody and I could not say no to these four books. First, we have The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore, which is a fab cover. 
So I first saw this compared to, um, what's it called? Outlawed by Anna North, which I read at the top of this year and liked the concept, but the execution just fell really flat for me. Um, it was more like a pretty cover, cover than anything else. Um, but this sounds really, really interesting. So I will read you the blurb. England, 1643, puritanical fervor has gripped the nation, and in Manningtree, a town depleted of men since the wars began, the hot terror of, terror of damnation burns in the heart of women left to their own devices. Rebecca West, fatherless and husbandless, chafes against the drudgery of her days, livened only occasionally by her infatuation with the handsome young clerk, John Eds. But then a newcomer, newcomer who identifies himself as the Witchfinder General arrives. So then we get into the dangerous rumors of covens and packs and bodily wants, and things get a little bit messy and terrifying. So it's all about the English witch trials and suspicion running amok. So I love that setting. I love those themes. I love those conversations, and I hope it is incredible. Okay, and then I got another Richard Powers. I read the overstory and really enjoyed it. I just loved like the scenes he created and you could like I think about that treehouse all the time and what that would have looked like. Um, I just thought that was a beautiful book. So this is, I will just read you the blurb. Something is wrong with Eddie Hobson Sr., father of four, sometime historical te history teacher, quiz master, black humorist, and virtuoso invalid. His reoccurring fainting spells have worsened, and knowing his ingrained aversion to doctors, his worried family tries to discover the nature of his sickness. Meanwhile, in private, Eddie puts the finishing touches on a secret project he calls Hobstown, a place that he promises will save him, the world, and everything that's in it. So I think it is, again, like a, a book all about nature and our connection to it and our place in it. So I think that might be, like, what Powers writes a lot about. So I'm really excited excited about it okay then if you know me you know I'm freaking out and cannot wait to read this the strange bird by Jeff Vandermeer so this is a born story meaning it's set in the same world as born which is one of my favorite books if not my favorite book of the year so I don't know if this would be con considered a novella I'm not really sure what the definition of a novella is, if I'm being honest, or it's just a short story. But it's all about the strange bird is a new kind of creature. Built in a laboratory, she's part bird, part human, part many things. So, again, I don't even, like, I can't even express my love for Born. I thought it was incredible. This cover, I want to just print this and have this as a poster in my home. I think it's incredible. He's just so brilliant. and So again, it's set in the same world. It's all about this massive enterprise that went south that was doing horrible things to animals and making them like part human, part creature, part machine, and how that goes awry. And what does being human and worthy of respect really mean? Um, so it's all about biotech, kind of on the loose. With The Strange Bird, Jeff Vandermeer has done more than add a new chapter to his celebrated novel, Born. He has created a whole new perspective in the world inhabited by Rachel and Wick, the magician Mord and Born. A view from above, but also a view from deep inside the mind of a new creature who will fight and survive and live in the tenuous future of this world. I'm dying to read this. I'm so, so excited. And it's itty bitty. And I'm sure it will be everything I ever dreamed it would be. Then, last book, I promise. I had not heard of this, but Hilary Mantel is blurbed on this book twice, front cover and the back, and this book is like itty bitty, and Mantel is there twice, and I trust her. So this is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. It is a book set in Ireland, and I feel like I have Ireland on the brain. I didn't mention this. Obviously, I didn't include it in my video for obvious reasons, but while I was in Germany, I was able to see an Irish relative. I'm not really sure what we are to each other, but my great-grandma and his mm, grandma are sisters. We're sisters. So my nana and his mom are first cousins, um, and I haven't seen him since I was five and went to Ireland for a wedding. Um, and it was just, it was just such a cool experience to see him with his baby in Germany. It was amazing. I got to hear the brogue, haven't heard one in a while. Um, so yeah, I just feel like I have Ireland on the mind, so I'm so excited about this. This is a little, little book, and it has all the Christmassy feels. You can see, like, snowing on the cover. It's a beautiful cover, so 
It is 1985 in a small Irish town. During the weeks leading up to Christmas, Bill Furlong, a coal merchant and a family man, faces his busiest season. Early one morning, while delivering an order to a local convent, Bill makes a discovery which forces him to confront pe both his past and the complicit silences of a town controlled by the church. So it's a deeply affecting story of hope, quiet heroism, and empathy for one from one of our most critically lauded and iconic writers. So I am beyond excited about this. It's like a little quick study of a town and packs a punch, I think. So I feel like I have some books to get me through to the end no, not the end, until like February or March of um, 2022. So comment your favorite ridiculous historical fiction down below and I will happily send one of you lengths so we could chat about it. My mom read it and hated it, so I have nobody to talk about it with, but I thought it was incredible. And with that said, I am going to go finish making my Candy King cookies and keep on reading Little Women, which is just making me feel so Christmassy and cozy and wonderful, and then get on to one of these in this selection. But yes, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, in another video. Bye, everyone.